I am Dr. V. Shubhamadi, working as an Associate Professor, Department of Management Studies, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. Course code P20 MBM C08. Subject name Financial Management. In this session, we are going to discuss about working capital. The definition for working capital. Working capital refers to a firm's investment in short-term assets, cash, short-term securities, accounts receivables and inventories. In shortly we can say that working capital means to meet day-to-day -day requirements. In every organization we can able to uh, that is very difficult to task to manage the day-to-day -day requirements. So that the working capital management is very very required for all the organizations. So Western and Brigham is given the definition for working capital is just a, the firm is going to invest into the short term assets in the cash or short term securities, accounts receivables and inventories. It is defined as the excess of current assets over current liabilities. Current assets are the most liquid and the most easily convertible to cash of all assets. Current liabilities or obligations due within one year, the working capital ratio is calculated as Working capital is needed to meet the following activities. First one, purchase of raw materials. Second one, payment of wages to workers and payment of day-to-day -day expenses. For these activities, we need to maintain the working capital in the organization. So first thing is they want to purchase the raw material for the organization. Second one, definitely uh, that organization should give wages to the workers. And third one, day-to-day -day expenses. So to meet, so this means working capital because we cannot accurately estimate the raw materials requirement for the organization. So based upon the order received, we will buy the raw materials. Based upon that, we need to give the wages and expenses may vary so that we cannot accurately ascertain or estimate the working capital requirement for the organizations. So first one, positive working capital. It means that the company is able to pay off its short term liabilities. That is fine. But negative working capital. It means that the company currently is unable to meet its short term liability with its current assets. That is a negative working capital. Then working capital management. Working capital management refers to the management of both current assets and current liabilities. It is a study of relationship between current assets and current liabilities. This is completely uh, studying the relationship between the current assets and current liabilities. This is complete study. Working capital management involves two main processes. First one, determining the size of amount of working capital. Second one, arranging the sources of working capital. So first thing is working capital management is involving into the size of working capital. So that means how much money is required, either 1 lakh, either 2 lakh, how much money is required, that is the size of amount of working capital. That is the main process of working capital management. Second one, arranging that sources. So that one lakh of rupee, how I'm going to get for the organization. That is the arranging and the sources of working capital. So these two things completely is discussing and involving in the working capital management. Concept of working capital. There are two concepts are there. First one is gross working capital. Second one, net working capital. First, gross working capital. It is the capital invested in total current assets of the enterprise. So gross working capital is just nothing but just that money is invested into the current assets. That current assets may be the cash, may be the receivables, may be the inventories, may be the securities, whatever. 
so that and all coming under gross working capital second one net working capital it refers to the net working capital is the excess of current assets over the current liabilities so excess of current assets over the liabilities is there that is called as net working capital so what are all the current assets and what are all the current liabilities current assets cash in hand and bank balance bills receivables sundry debts short term loans and advances inventories like raw materials and uh, Uh, semi uh, semi manufactured goods that and all coming under current assets current liabilities bills payable sundry creditors accounts payable accrued or outstanding expenses short term loans advances and deposits bank overdrafts etc so these are all calling it as the current liabilities circular flow of working capital or operating cycle so operating cycle this is defined as the time duration starting from the procurement of goods or raw materials or ending with the sales realizations so this is the circular flow operating cycle so this is the operating cycle so cash at bank how much cash is there at the bank and purchases of raw material so how we are going to purchase and how much money is required for that and next one is the conversation so whether it will take more time or less time and next one is inventory whether i am going to invest into that cash into inventories sales how much sales may take place for that inventories and collections so this is the operating cycle so it will happening automatically so day by day it will happening in the organization so for the for that definitely working capital management is required so this is the circular flow this is the operating cycle of the working capital management so another uh, operating cycle so o equal to r plus w plus f plus d minus c so operating cycle consists of the following important stages first one raw materials and storage stage this is the basic thing so definitely in every organization they will maintain the raw material and they will buy and how much they are storing for the future purposes so if you are able to storage your raw material definitely we can avoid the problems in the working capital so that is the first one raw material and storage stage second one work in progress so how much semi manufactured goods are there so that is the second stage third one finished goods how much finished goods are in the garden that is stock and d is debtors collection stage how much money is able to we we should able to receive we are in the position to receive so that money is called as d and finally creditors payment period stage so how much we need to give give to them other creditors that is called as creditors so this is the operating cycle so raw material work in progress finished goods debtors minus creditors that is called as operating cycles man so each component of the operating cycle can be calculated by the following formula so or average stock of raw material divided by average raw material consumption per day average stock of raw material equal to opening stock of raw material plus closing stock of raw material divided by 2 work, uh, work in progress so average work in process inventory divided by average cost of production per day so average work in progress again opening stock of work in progress plus closing stock of work in progress divided by 2 f finished goods average finished goods inventory divided by average cost of goods sold per day so again opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 dead d equal to average book debts divided by average credit sales per day and c equal to average trade creditors divided by average credit purchase per day so this is the operating cycle calculating formula principles of working capital principles of risk evaluation principle of cost capital 
principle of equity position principles of maturity payment so sources of working capital long term financing short term financing spontaneous financing long term financing loans from financial institutions floating of debentures accepting public deposits issue of shares and raising funds by internal financing short term financing it refers to those sources of short term credit that the firm must arrange in advance these sources includes short term bank loans commercial papers and factoring of receivables spontaneous financing it refers to the automatic sources of short term funds the major sources of such financing are trade credit creditors and bills payable and outstanding expenses the spontaneous sources of finances are cost free types of working capital permanent working capital it means the minimum amount of investment in all current assets which is regarded at all times to carry on minimum level of business activities so it means permanent working capital means the amount is going to invest in all the current assets so that is called as permanent one temporary working capital fluctuating or variable working capital the amount of temporary working capital keeps on changing depending upon the changes in production and sales so that is called as temporary gross working capital amount of funds invested in various components of current assets various components maybe the cash maybe the stock maybe the receivables maybe the securities so this and all gross working capital net working capital this is the difference between current assets and current liabilities and it enables a firm to determine how much amount is left for operational needs negative working capital when current liabilities exceeds current assets that is negative working capital emerges such a situation occurs when a firm is nearing a crisis of some magnitude reserve working capital it refers to short term financial management arrangement made by the business units to meet uncertain changes or to meet uncertainties business firms are always exposed to risk which may be controllable or uncontrollable importance of working capital or advantages what are all the advantages are there if you are able to manage very clearly working capital for the organization first one solvency of the business second one goodwill easy loans cash discounts regular supply of raw materials regular payment of salaries wages and other day to day commitments exploitation of favorable market condition ability to face crises quick and regular return on investment high morally so solvency will be there in the organization if we maintain properly goodwill easy loans we may get cash discounts regular supply of raw materials will take place and regular payment of salaries wages labor everything will be day to day commitments will be happening regularly and expectation of the favorable market condition ability to face crises quick and regular return on investment and high morally so roles of financial manager so these are all the some current assets and conservation policy moderate policy aggressive policy so some of the important roles of financial manager he is to handling the working capital management all definitely he should have a knowledge on current assets exploration of the sources selection of the instrument selection of the approaches general considerations so these are all the uh, roles of financial managers determinants of working capital requirements determinants very important one nature of business size of business manufacturing cycle production cycle volume of sales term of purchases and sales business cycle growth and expansion 
fluctuations in supply of raw materials, price level changes, operating efficiency, profit margin, profit appropriation, credit policy of Reserve Bank of India, capital structure of the company. Issues in working capital. Components such as marketable securities, receivables and inventories. Time. Working capital management requires much of the financial manager's time. Time as either permanent or temporary working capital. Investment. Working capital represents a large portion of the total investment in assets. Criti criticality. Working capital management has great significance for all firms but it is very critical for small firms. Growth. The need for working capital is directly related to the firm's growth. Estimation of working capital requirement. So this is a statement. Current assets less current liabilities add provisions or margins of contingency. So cash, debt of or receivables, stocks, advance payments and others. So current liabilities, credit odds, lag in payment of expenses, add provision or margin of contingencies, net working capital required. So for a manufacturing concern, the stock of raw material, stock work in progress, raw material, direct labor, overheads, stock of finished goods, Again, raw material, direct labor overheads, sundry data of receivables, raw materials, direct labor overheads, payment in advance, balance of cash, any other. So, less again creditors, um, lag in payments and provision for margin. So, we will get the networking capital required for the manufacturing concern. Accounts receivables management. Receivables represents amounts owned to the firms as a result of sale of goods or services in the ordinary course of business. These are claims of firm against in customers and form part of its current assets. Receivables are also called as accounts receivables, trade receivables, customer receivables and book trades. Receivables management. It is the process of making decisions relating to the investments of funds in accounting receivables which will result in maximizing the overall return on the investment of the firm. Purpose of receivables. The purpose of receivables is directly connected with the objective of making credit sales. The objective of credit sales are as follows. Achieving growth in sales. If a firm sells goods on credit, it will generally be in the position to sell more goods than if it is insisted or immediate cash payment. Increasing profits. Increase in sales results in higher profits for your firm not only because of increase in the volume of sales but also because of the firm charging higher margin of profit on credit sales as compared to cash sales. Meeting, meeting competition. A firm may have to resort to to uh, granting of credit facilities to its customers because of similar facilities being granted by the competing firms to avoid the loss of sales from customers who would buy elsewhere if they did not receive the expected credit. Factoring meaning the word factoring has been derived from the Latin word factor which means to make or to do in other words it means to get things done. Definition. Factoring is a method of financing by, by a company sales it trade debts at a discount to a financial institutions, namely the factor and the company, namely the client, which sells goods and services to trade customers on credit. A financial services whereby an institution called the factor undertakes the task of realizing accounts, receivables such as book debts, bills receivables and managing sundry debts and sales registers of commercials and trading firms in the capacity of an agent for a commission is known as factoring. Functions of factoring Maintenance of sales ledger 
to maintain sales ledger of the client for service charge. Collection of accounts receivables, it undertakes to do the collection and thus relieves the client. Credit control and credit protection provides better credit control with the help of extensive information provides quality service in this area. Financing of receivables. It purchases the book debts of a supplier client at a price in whose favor the debts are assigned. Advisory services. It is a specialized experience in matters of financial and credit enables to advise the client's developments in their industries. Inventory management. Inventory. Stock of goods. In accounting, it is stock of finished goods. In manufacturing, it includes raw materials and work in process. Definition. It is defines inventory in the sense of tangible goods which are held off for sales in process of production and available for ready consumption. Kinds of inventories. Raw materials, work in progress, finished goods. Techniques of Inventory Management Economic Order Quantity EOQ Optimum Production Quantity Reorder Level Inventory Turnover Aging Schedule of Inventory ABC Analysis VED Analysis Just in Time So these are all the important techniques for inventory management. Determination of EOQ EOQ refers to the size of the order which gives maximum economy in purchasing any item of raw material or finished goods. Formula EOQ equal to 2AB divided by S. So A means quantity, B means cost of placing an order, annual cost of storage of one unit. Determination of optimum production quantity. EOQ model can be extended to production runs to determine the optimum production quantity. The two costs involved in this process are set up the cost and inventory carrying cost. So E optimum production quantity root of 2U into P divided by S. Annual output set up cost for each production run and cost of carrying inventory per unit per annum. Cash management, meaning in narrow sense, coins, currency notes, checks, bank draft. In broad sense, cash assets, marketable securities, and time deposit. So definition, cash management has assumed importance because it is the most significant of all the current assets. It is required to meet business obligations and it is unproductive when not used. Cash management deals with the following cash inflows and outflows, cash inflows with the firm, cash balance held by the firm at a point of time. Motive of uh, holding cash Transactional motive A firm enters into a variety of business transactions resulting in both inflows and outflows. Precautionary motive A firm keeps cash balance to meet unexpected cash needs arising out of unexpected contingencies such as floods, strikes, accounts receivables, etc. Speculative motive A firm also keeps cash balance to take advantage of unexpected opportunities, typically outside the normal course of the business. Such motive is therefore of purely a speculative nature. Compensatory motive Bank provide certain services to their clients free for charge. Objectives of cash management to make cash payments to maintain minimum cash reserves. Process of minimizing level of cash in cash management. Preparing cash budget. It is the most significant device for planning and controlling the use of cash. It involves the projection of future cash receipts and cash disbursement of the firm over various intervals of time. Providing for unpredictable discrepancies, a certain minimum amount of cash balance has to be kept for meeting such unforeseen contingencies. Consideration of short cost. It refers to the cost incurred as a result of shortage of cash. 
availability of other sources of funds. A firm can avoid holding unnecessary large balance of cash for contingency in case it has to pay a slightly higher rate of interest than that on a long term debt. Cash management models. So, Baumo model carrying cost and transaction cost will be there. So, it is suggested by William J. Baumol. Optimum cash level is the level of cash where the carrying cost and transaction cost are the minimum. So, carrying cost, this refers to the cost to holding cash, namely the interest foregone on marketable securities. Transactional cost. This refers to the cost involved in getting the marketable securities converted into cash. So, C equal to root of 280 divided by I. So, optimum cash balance, annual cash disbursement, cost per transaction, interest rate that is carrying cost per rupee of cash. Miller or model. This model helps in determining the optimum level of cash in the organization. It deals with cash management problem under the assumptions of random cash flows by laying down control limits for cash balance. These limits consist of an upper limit, lower limit on the return point. When cash balance reaches the upper limit, the transfer of cash equal to UR is affected to marketable security. When it touches the lower limit, a transfer equal to RO from marketable securities to cash in made. Formula is R equal to 3 root of 3T square uh, divided by I. Causes and effects of over trading. So, causes. Depletion of working capital. It results in depletion of cash resources and it get depleted by premature repayment of long term loans, excessive drawings, dividend payments, etc. Fact, a faulty financial policy. It results in shortage of cash and over trading in several ways like using working capital for purchase of fixed assets to expand the volume of the business without raising the necessary resources, etc. Over expansion. Government may pressuring the manufacturers to increase the volume of production without providing for adequate finances. Such pressures results in over expansion of the business ignoring the elementary rules of the sound finance. Inflation and rising fire prices. It makes renewals and replacements of assets costlier. The wages and materials costs also rise. Excessive taxation. It results in depletion of cash resources at a scale of higher than what is justified. The cash position is further stained on account of efforts to the company to maintain a reasonable dividend rates for their shareholders. FX. Difficulty in paying wages and tax, costly purchases, reduction in sales, difficulty in making payments. Causes and effects of under trading. Causes. Conservative policies followed by the management, non-availability or shortage of basic facilities necessary for produ production such as raw materials, powers, labors, etc. General depression in the market resulting in fall in the demand of the company's products. FX The profit of the firm show a declining trend resulting in a lower return on capital employed in the business. The value of share of the company on the stock exchange starts falling on account of the lower profitability. There is a loss to the reputation of the firm on account of lower profitability and creation of impression in the minds of investors that the management is inefficient. <coughs> Short term finance. Funds available for a period of one year or less are called as short term sources of finance. Spontaneous sources. Funds which are credit created during the course of normal businesses activity have zero cost and are termed as spontaneous sources. Example, supplier supply goods, employee provide services where the payment are made at a later stage. Types, 
trade credit. That credit extended in connection with the goods purchased for resale by a retailer or wholesaler for raw material used by the manufacturer in producing its products, it is called as trade credit. Open account. It is usually extended only after the seller conducts a fairly extensive investigation of the buyer's standards and reputation. Acceptance credits and bills payable. Trade credit may also take the form of bills payable. In such case, the buyer accepts the bill of exchange or gives the promissory note for the amount due by him to the seller. Merits easy availability, flexibility and informality. Demerits increase the cost and over trading. Accrued expenses refers to the services received by the firm but the payment for which has not been made. The accrued expenses represents an interest-free sources of finance. Merits interest-free cost. Demerits postponement of salary. Wages beyond the normal level will affect the morale of the employees resulting in reduced efficiency and higher labor turnover. Bank loans. It is a short-term financing say for years so. This short-term financing to business firm is regarded as self-liquidating. It means banks routinely provide finance to meet the seasonal demand to cover the seasonal increase in inventories or receivables. Types of bank loans. Cash credit. It is usually made against the security of commodities hypothecated with the bank. It is an arrangement by which a banker allows his customers to borrow money up to a certain limit. Overdraft. A firm already having a current account with a banker is allowed to withdraw above the balance in the current account. The amount so overdrawn may be repaid by depositing back in the current account as and when the firm wants. Bill discounts and bills purchased. The bank also gives a short term advances to their customers by discounting the bill of exchange. The discount depends upon the amount of the bill, the maturity period and the prime lending rate prevailing at that time. Merits are low cost and flexibility. Conditions Fixing credit limits for each borrower and each customer. Exclusion of certain customers from factoring, for example, sale to sister concern can, cannot be factored. Standardization of invoices. Acknowledgement from customers for actual supply of goods under the invoice. Instruction to customers that the payment shall be forwarded directly to the financial institutions. Commercial papers. It is a dead instrument issued by the corporate for raising the short term resources from the money market. These are the unsecured debts of the corporate and it is issued in the form of promissory notes redeemable at par to the holders at maturity. Intercorporate deposit. It is a generally unsecured and are arranged by an financier. It is very common and popular in practice as these are not influenced by the legal hazards. Once again, I want to thank Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research for giving me this opportunity.